Okay. Okay. Nahmadu wa nusalli ala rasul kareem. Fama bad. Fawadu billahi min ash-shaytan ar-rajim. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Rabbi shrahli sadri wa yassirli amri wa hlu lukdatan min lisani yafqahu qawli. Rabbi zina ilma. Rabbi zina ilma. Rabbi zina ilma. I think this is what I remember one of the teachers doing. Anyway. Um, Ya Allah the Beloved, in the Shaitan and Rajim, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alamin, Ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Malik Yawm al-Din. Iya ka na'budu wa iya ka nasta'in. Ihdina sirat al-Mustaqim. Sirat al-Ladina anamta alayhim. Ghayr al-Maktubi alayhim wa latwaaleen. Ameen. Now, Shaykh did say to recite Surah Fatiha, so there you go. Okay, so share screen. Um, okay, so today um, we we want to look at Surah Al Qamar because, well, actually, it's my um, I want to look at Surah Al Qamar. Yes. Um, the reason being is because today, uh, if we're reciting according to um, the moon, which Sheikh Imran Hussein has shown us how to do. Today, well, for two months almost, I've been wanting to speak about this thing that I think I've come across. And um, it was just by chance today recited uh, the 23rd portion. And do you know what the 23rd portion is, Sadi? What's today? Uh, you mean the surah? Surah Qaf, Surah yeah, Jariyat. Surah, 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 surah Qaf, Surah Jariyat, Surah Tur, and Surah uh, Qamr. Najm and Qamr, yeah. Najm and Qamr. Najm, yeah, Najm, Najm. Yeah. So that, that's why I decided, I thought, subhanAllah, maybe it's meant to be, because what I want to speak about is today was supposed to be recited as well. Okay, oh, so... The moon, yeah? Yeah. Um, hmm. Okay, so Al-Qamr, the hour, the moon, and the recitation. Um... So obviously the first thing that we looked at was um, we did a Surah Ar-Rahman, right? Surah Ar-Rahman. Yes. And what was it that, what was significant about Surah Ar-Rahman that captured all of our imagination? Imran, Brother Imran, what was it? It was the flip. It was the inverting. It was, it was, it was the subtle hints in the Surah which is uh, directed at the Shaitan and it has a way of implying implying a message within the surah within how the surah is structured and, and also it was yeah. and also it was the fact that when you go when you ask not our sheikh but when you ask you know the local masjid sheikh uh you know what is so great about surah surah rahman all they will say is that uh, it's beauty and <laughs> It's beauty. So every su every yeah. surah is beautiful. <laughs> of course, every surah is beautiful, but beauty is two ways. Beauty is justice, and beauty uh, is divine. And so, you know, when the when Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says "Fabi ayi ala yirabbukum atukat divan," He says that thirty one times, and you flip it, and you get thirteen. That's where He starts. You know, there's something Allah Subhanahu wa Taala is saying something very intelligent there that uh, that we have found. And you know, I mean. Even going back to that, that's 1,400 years, and now we are understanding these small things, right? But continue, yeah. brother. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, so you're right. Obviously, everything is looked at most of the time on surface value. I mean, on surface level. So, yeah, today's uh, portion of the recitation according to the moon involved Surah Najm. Uh, so towards the end, the last two surahs is Surah Najm, then Surah Al-Qamar. And then it leads on to tomorrow's portion of recitation, which begins with Surah Rahman. So now Surah mm. Rahman, yeah. So now Surah Rahman has Fabi Ayi Alai Rabbi Kumatika Diban 31 Ooh, times. Yeah? yeah. 31 times, right? From, from verse 13. Now, if you remember, we spoke about Surah Rahman being Surah number 55, yeah. Surah number 55. So yeah. is it by chance that the surah preceding Surah Rahman has 55 verses in it? Yeah. yeah. And even the surah preceding that, so that's the surah Al-Qamr, before yeah. Ar-Rahman is surah Al-Qamr, which is the surah of the moon. Yeah. And before surah Al-Qamr, the moon, is surah, surah Najm. Najm, the star, yeah. yeah? So I think that there must be something special in this, the star, the moon, 
both in the Moon Surah, he's got 55 verses, yeah. and both in, and in the Najm, so towards the end, I noticed. So this is one thing Sheikh Imran Hussain says. First of all, you have to recite, then you will come across these things, then you will notice yeah. these things. Yeah. And I think he's right. So if you look at in Surah Najm, is a very similar verse. This is what I wanted Sheikh for, actually, uh, to ask him about this. So in Surah Najm, on verse 55 as well. Mm. Yeah? And so... Fabi ayi alai rabbika tatamara. Okay, it's not uh, tukadliban, but it's yeah, very yeah. similar. It's very similar. And it's verse 55. Clearly, Allah is saying something, right? Let yeah. me... Uh... I'll open, I'll open the verse anyway. I'll open the verse. And so one thing I also yeah. noticed that uh, I don't think the meaning I... of this the meaning of this verse. Oh sorry, sorry, brother Imran. Uh, you can so sorry, when, brother, just... when brother was talking about Surah Al Kamar, right? A Surah Al Kamar is talking obviously the moon. And now mm -hmm. verse 55 in Surah Rahman, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala just again says, which uh, which favors will you will you deny? So now what does now if we look at that verse, is it coincidence that it has 19 letters? And is it a coincidence that the moon cycle comes in, in 19 years? Mm. Right? What, what do you what do you mean by the moon cycle? Uh let that. me just Google that quickly. It's uh it's called 19. So it's called a metonic cycle. So every mm -hmm. 19 years, yeah. um, so how, let me just, the metonic cycle is a periodic of approximately 19 years after which the phases of the moon reoccur at the same time of the year. So it, this is something, I mean, we got to kind of look into. Yeah, uh, definitely, okay. definitely. It's another connection. But another it connection. Just adds, it just adds more layers to yeah. that there's something else going on that we can't see. Exactly. So that's another 55 connection very close to that. So like how you said, the moon. So go, going back to, okay, so why did I pick out Surah al Kamar? Because I feel like, obviously, we're, we can recognize that we're coming towards the end of time. And the end of time, what's the word that Allah uses in the Quran? Asa'a, yeah? The hour. The hour. The hour. And now if you look at, okay, so if you look at verse... Okay, so if, if asa'a is the word that Allah uses as describing the hour, yeah, am I right? I think it's asa'a. Yeah, yeah? The, the, the hour. Yeah. yeah, the hour. So there's, there's only two surahs in the entire Quran that begins in the first verse with the mention of asa'a. Yeah, mm -hmm. only two surahs. How many surahs are there? 114. So out of mm -hmm. those 114 surahs, only two surahs has uh, asa'a as the first, uh, as the, in the mention of the first verse. That's Surah Al-Hajj and Surah Al-Qamar. Mm. But why am I picking out Surah Al-Qamar? So if there's two surahs that do the same thing, mentioning as Sa'a, why am I picking out Al-Qamar? Because Al-Qamar is the only one that mentions another verse. So just like how in Surah, in surah Rahman, we picked out, uh, Brother Imran showed us why uh, verse 13 is rep repeated 31 times. So in Surah Al-Qamr, there's also a verse that's repeated four times. And now, obviously, as we know by now, that Allah doesn't do things, you know, uh, Accidentally. For, no reason, for no reason. So if so if anyone's wondering, let me just point that out in the two-page view. Here we go. So this is Surah Al-Qamr. Yeah, Iqtar about this, Sa'a, one shakkal, what is it? One shakkal qamr. Shakkal qamr, yeah. Yeah. So here's the verses. This is the first time it's repeated. Walakad yasarna Qur'ana li dhikri fahal mimi muddakir. Yeah, yeah. So that's verse 17. And then again in verse... I can't remember which one is this. Verse 20. 21. 21. No, 22. 22. That's 22. Walakad yasarna Qur'ana li dhikri fahal mimi muddakir. Yeah, are you seeing this, brother Imran? Yeah, yeah. It's a bit small, but yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, let me figure it out. Open yeah, your we, own, uh, or maybe we, uh, brother Imran, open your own uh, Quran on your own device. Yeah, you can. Yeah, so here it is. Yeah, wait, hold on. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, yes, Quran. So, in Surah Al Qamar, that's the first time it's mentioned, that exact same verse. Second time it's mentioned, 
and then third time it's mentioned, and then fourth time it's mentioned. To be honest, if Allah mentions it, repeats a verse twice, that's enough for me. Yeah, I know yeah. 31 was major, but four times is still major, is very major as well, right? Significant, yeah, significant. Significant. So now that's the reason why I picked this out. So Sheikh Imran Hussein says, what does he say? We need to recite the Quran according to the moon. And in Surah, so the moon is Surah Al Qamar. And in Surah Al Qamar, what is that verse that is being repeated? Four times. Four times. So this is the first one, yeah? First mention. What is Allah saying? This is the, uh, and we certainly have them. Oh, subhanAllah. So this is like uh, because remembrance of the Quran is uh, related to re recitation. If you recite the Quran according to the lunar cycle every month, automatically your uh, the quran is implanted in your brain circuitry right so that that is what uh, that is that is a message that is a message. also it's also telling you that uh i mean Allah Subhanahu has made it easy to remember so this is why the certain words are always repeated and so who will who will, so is there anyone who will remember it meaning if you don't care for the quran then it's not going to really care about you uh, mm -hmm. you have to recite it yourself and so the occult way is what do they do they prime you with the same words with the same mm, opposite mm. words so that you remember what they want you to remember yeah you know brother Imran, brother Imran, that's uh you know brother Imran, that's a very beautiful uh, point you just raised puts it entirely into perspective mm. because the occult they use our principles they they use divine yes. They hijack divine principles. And, and I think we need to stop saying occult. And I think we need to really pinpoint who it is. And it's Shaitan. Because he knows yeah. his book. And he's the he, one teaching he them. And he's the one that's affecting us. <laughs> it, well, he's, he's not teaching them the Quran. He's teaching them his stuff his, by, the, yeah. by the principles of the Quran. The so, of the Quran. so like uh, uh, an example of this reputation, reputation uh, our beloved teacher, Dr. Omar Zaid, taught us that when uh, when they want the whole world to adopt a fake propaganda, mm -hmm. what, 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 it, it does not begin by the politicians. It starts from the magi, the majus, the magicians, yes. whereby the majus recite chants, re re repeat chants, and those chants are then corroborate the shaitan, don't then pick up the chained shaitan, then pick up those uh, uh, chants and oh, they bring they bring it down the pyramid to the uh, Freemasons and then the Freemasons pass this recitation on to the politicians and then this uh, recitation is get, get ready for this is broadcasted throughout the entire world. What what, what what do you what do you say when you put a spell on pe people? Yes. You cast a spell. Cast on a spell. People. Mm. So this it's all, recite, it's all hidden in plain sight. And, and exactly. recite, even even in recitation, movie, even in movies. Sorry, the, yeah. Sorry, even just uh, just one more point. Even in even when you want to become a part of a show or a movie, you have to be in the cast. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. This recitation so that, so is then joining, broadcast. You're joining a spell. Yeah, that's exactly. interesting. So you're joining exactly. a spell. Yeah. And what, what what is it broadcast by the the fake media, man? What, what why do, have you met those crazy people? And I think all of us have. Majority of people, they are just hypnotized. You know, either either they're absorbing the broadcast from CNN, BBC, and they cannot their brains are shut. They cannot think. Or as we see with our youth, the women especially, with TikTok, Instagram, these are all casts. Like it's all. Idea. It's it's all broadcasting, you know, broadcasting. And I even have an uh, I even have a uh, one idea. I don't think it, if it's true or not. Notice how all the uh, Instagram, uh, uh, I mean, all media outlets, all of their uh, symbols have the I. Now, now this is common knowledge for people like us who have been looking into this. Like, okay, it's I. It might be the Dajjali I. What if it's the evil I itself? You know, it, it's just put there. So the whole world is on under the evil eye, under a, a spell. And so that, that spell is connected to your pineal gland, which is where that eye originates from. In, uh, yeah. And this spell, uh, this spell goes back to 
recitation. What are you reciting? Mm. That's why Sheikh Imran Hussein makes a very strong point. And if you're not reciting, he does not say uh, mm. uh, uh, studying or familiarizing. Or he reading. says if or you're not, if you yeah. or even reading. If he says if you're not reciting the Quran according to the lunar lunar cycle, you will not be protected. You will not be protected. And so yeah. another thing too here is that I just that I just came to my mind is that when it's saying here like the hour has come near the moon and the the, the previous one is recite by the moon mm -hmm. the moon is at night just like how they do their occult magic at night yes this yes. is the opposite this is so where we power this is a good power. power and a bad power right or there's bad people trying to draw that power and then allah shown us how the good people can draw the power exactly. right? how are you supposed to be how is what's the most organic way to draw the power it is to recite it at based upon the moon and to maybe even to recite it at night where when they're doing the casting and spelling on you you do the opposite by reciting the the you know the words of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala yeah because and uh, uh, in the quran allah mentions uh, addresses uh, the muhtasimin many times the muhtasimin are the people who chop up the quran so if you yeah, yeah, yeah. Hold, on, hold on we're going to get to that hold it you guys are bringing everything everything that you're saying is coming up yeah hold hold that thought it's going to come so what is it that everyone's obsessed with end times what is it that everyone is thinking of prepping right yeah everyone wants everyone is trying to get into prepping so do you think allah would you know if the answers as we know are in the quran yeah uh, for everything so if the end time is coming don't you think isn't it good for us to find out what Allah says is the number one prepping tool? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Everyone, everyone's focused on all of these other SHTF, what is it? When things get really bad, prepping. But what's, what's Allah saying? What's Allah saying is the number one tool? That's that's why I want to focus on this because I think he's shown us. Yeah. In the surah, yeah, that has a sa, the hour is drawn near and the moon is split asunder. So what is Allah saying four times? Um and we have certainly made the Quran easy for remembrance. So is there anyone who will remember? So as Sheikh Imran Hussain says, as you just said, Quran, what is Quran? See, the, um, Quran is a, a recitation, right? It's a thing to recite. Yep, yeah. It's a recitation, yes. It's a recitation. Whereas we've been led to believe for a long time. What is that verse? Uh, read in the name of your Lord. Ikra, bismi, rabbi, color. Yeah? Yeah. People have always said read, isn't it? Where it's not, read is not the right it's translation, not read, right? Yeah. 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 Yep. So this verse is repeated four times. Because if it was a reading, then the prophet would not have replied, "What am I supposed to read?" Mm -hmm. Exactly. You know, because if you tell if you if you tell a little a little child, okay, not a child. Uh, if you tell like, like a person, read, he will ask you like, "Is there a book? Like, what am I supposed to read?" If there was a book, if there was a book in front of the prophet. The prophet would automatically have said, oh, you want me to read this book? But the prophet never said, do you want me to read this book? Because there was no book. Mm -hmm. He was expected to recite. Mm -hmm. Like he, That's why he replied, what, what do you want me to recite? You know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So what, what do you think when, if Allah is saying this four times, uh, Allah you know, first. it's like a question. It's like a question four times. For me, it's like when you tell a child, um, who's going to brush your teeth? 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 It's kind of like that for me. Yeah. It's, it, it's kind of like telling you, you're supposed to do it. Yeah. Are you going to do it? The hour is here. The end time is here. That's what it sounds like to me. I don't know what you guys think. Yeah, that's, that's exactly right. And um, we're supposed to recite. Why are we supposed to recite? Uh, not only just to gain knowledge from, but it will act as an intercessor on the day of judgment. And what greater of an intercession is the Quran to have? Right. So that was why we. Picked, that's why we want to talk about this al -Qamr. So now you just brought it, brought it up. Why recite this? Yeah. So this is what Sheikh Imran Hussain says. Mm, protection. Yeah, so protection. Yeah. yeah. Mm. Uh, I like this image because it's uh, an image of Prophet Daniel. Prophet Daniel alayhi salam being protected by the angels when all the lions in that den always killed everyone. But in his case, he stayed firm. Yeah. And I think if I've got the story right, by staying firm, despite all of what was being thrown at him, he, he received the gift 
or being protected and actually I think licked by the lions. Yeah. Instead yeah. of being eaten. Just, yeah. This is the, just like Ibrahim Ali Salam in the fire. Right, exactly. Just like that, exactly. So you stay loyal. Um, so yeah, why do we recite the Quran? Because it will be a protection. How do we say that? Okay, so the what's this hadith? Um yeah, the last hour. That's why I picked up this hadith, because this hadith is again about asa'a, the last hour. Yeah. When the hour or the hour is drawn, what is it that we're told to do? I mean, sorry, what does it say? Time is constricted. A year would pass like a month, a month like a week, and a week like a day, and a day like an hour, and an hour like the time it takes to kindle a fire. Again, I keep hearing Sheikh Imran saying to say this. And that oh, uh, yeah, go on. This this is coinciding with that the uh, that the moon has drawn near, meaning the time has come closer and closer. Mm. So this is the same thing as is what this hadith is saying is that a year will pass like a month, a month like a week, and a week like a day, and a day like an hour, and an hour like the time it takes to kindle a fire. So meaning time is moving faster and faster, just like Allah Taala says that that the moon has drawn near. Mm. So it's it's mm -hmm. coinciding here. Yeah, but is it time, or as Sheikh Imran is saying, perception is it of time. perception of time? Perception of time, or perception of time, exactly. Perception of time. It is, so it is, the reason, is, yeah. yeah. It's perception, it's, uh, as Sheikh Imran Hussain has, according to him, it's perception of time. Yeah. Mm. And, and this is uh, corroborated by Einstein. Time is relative, you know? Time right. is relative. Yeah. Right. And uh, so the reason why I bring this up as well is because if it's perception of time, how is it that we are perceiving time moving faster and how do we correct it then if it is perception? So Quran. Yeah. So it's the Sheikh Imran Hussain says that it's the recitation that will bring you back in sync with the moon. So I think is it is it if you're out of sync from of the moon, then yeah. you feel time is getting faster. But if you're in sync with the moon, then you're back in the what is it your heart's beating in tune i think something like that is it's it sync, right? yeah yes in yeah. synchronicity yeah yeah you know also so, going going on uh you know i mean as myself as a student of sheikh with falls you know when we read when we read nature everything in nature moves slowly everything you know the prophets and all the prophets they all lived in nature so they you know for us to be a part of that time or that perception of time where it moves closer and closer we have to make hijra where we move away from technology even though yeah we're speaking through technology but there's no other way to, to talk to each other but you know the more we the the way this dunya is working it is moving closer and closer to technology time will proceed faster and faster because everything needs to be done right away right away right away yeah. but yet in nature and the moon everything takes time everything yeah. needs uh needs to be in balance Slows down well, slows, well, slows that's down. Why, that, yeah. Yeah. That's why you look at you look at the uh, the the corporate corporate world and the the social media world. Everything is clocked. You know, it's just like uh, basically what Shaker Shaker Hussain said once that the jal the jal uh, brought out the clock because I don't think they had a clock in the 14th century. They 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 used to look uh, they used to navigate by the stars and the used to keep track of time by the cosmic bodies, the sun and the moon. But yeah. the Jal brought this clock and standardized time so that everything is, uh, you know, recorded. Everything is in the eye of the Jasasa. Basically, everything is uh, under the one eye. Basically, basically the Jal can keep track of everything. And it's such that people become like uh, machines. And bro, I have experiences because I'm in university right now. And in the corporate world, and I can tell you that when you go in that world, it really hurts your soul. You feel you're against your own nature. It's like you have to do this nine to ten, and then and then you have to do this. You have to go to this meeting, go to that. That's why people say they cannot recite the Quran. They don't. What's their excuse? Mm. I, I just don't have time. Don't have time. Don't have time. But, that, yeah. but that's the hack. That's what Brother Always is saying. Mm. Yes, this is the hack. Yes, the I like Quran that. It is time. It is the time. The Quran yeah. is time. So yeah. And, and so I, yeah. Yeah. So I picked up this verse because, again, it's got the mention of asa, but at the same time is, uh, I, see, this is what I wanted to shake as well, actually, uh, or anyone who's good with Arabic. What is this word, yudrika? Oops, yudrika. 
Is it perception? Is it knowing? Yeah. This one, Yudrika. Is it perception? See, this is what I want to know. And what will make you perceive? Because if the hour is here, oh. if the hour has drawn, how will you know? And I think it's kind of implied, the book, yeah? How will you know that the hour has drawn? This near? book, the Quran. This book, For yeah, sure. that's, that's what I'm thinking. I mean, it's not a very strong uh, yeah. thought of mine, but it's just about the Asara. Because, uh, yeah, when I look at the other translation, it's mm. saying, uh, and what shall make you thee know? Uh, mm -hmm. So meaning, what 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 will I say to you for you to perceive what I'm really actually mm -hmm. saying? Mm -hmm. So I think you're yeah. onto something there here because uh, yeah. even all of the uh, even how do you know the hour is drawing near? Right, and exactly, you know? and that's the problem we have today, isn't it? Everyone's like, no, 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 no. You're you're making too much of this. Everything's normal. You know, everything's okay. It's all about perception, isn't it? Mm -hmm. How will you know? And I think even when it's actually like an episode from The Simpsons. Even when there is serious destruction outside, yeah, they'll be like, you know, acting like, no, what? This is normal, you know. The people will be like, oh, you're crazy. Uh, the fire is right in front of you, and you're like crazy. It's, it's still not here. So that's what I'm thinking. It will be about perception. I, I think it can also mean something like, uh, you will never know unless the unless you literally see the hour in front of you. Yeah. Then it's like. It, this is what's going to make you perceive is you is this what? what it is this what it takes do you know All what I the, when you said that yeah your own at the last moment at the last moment now yeah. now you accept now, now you, accept. you say yeah now you accept because when when he's when uh, death is coming for him mm -hmm. now the re reality is unveiled now Firaun sees okay he's not god it's mm -hmm. he, he lied to himself even though he really knew inside but he ignored it because of his, uh, because of the idol, because of his ego, right? So yeah. people deep down, bro, deep down, I'm, I'm, I'm speaking to the people. Yeah. You, uh, maybe you feel that uh, I failed, brother always failed. Maybe you guys feel that guy uh, opening your family's eyes, but deep down they know you're saying the truth. Yeah. But what, what will make them perceive? Perhaps mm. they have to literally see the hour in front of them. Well, I think, them I think this is one of the solutions, if not the only solution, yeah. the recitation of the Quran. That's what I'm exactly. thinking. This is where the difference is. Um, I mean, obviously, other people are perceiving who are not reciting the Quran. So maybe there's other aspects as well. Yeah, yeah, true. But maybe this is our protection then or strengthening. Um, but, also, but also the thinking part, I think that needs to be really addressed because the thing is, I mean, I mean, you go to the masjid and a lot of people are reciting the Quran and mm. yet they don't see why because they don't think and mm. if you start thinking about the quran then you can be like hey wait a minute i could be wrong in my perception what does the other brother have to say mm. and so this is it's where true. perception perception it's and true. reality yes. need to align yes but, just like but, earlier today my perception needs to be checked yes. all of us all of us yes. but, yeah. but but they're but they're not reciting those people you that you mentioned those uh, mm. muslims they're not reciting uh uh, according to how it needs to be recited or they're not reciting with the right intention that uh, to get knowledge you know what I mean uh, mm -hmm. uh, like they're, oh. they're just re they're just reciting because mm. it's just uh, yeah I have to do this it's not because I want to do this and I want to get this knowledge it's just I have to do this that's that's yeah. why they're doing it so Alhamdulillah Sheikh has joined us so the Sheikh. hour has the hour has drawn near Sheikh has joined Yes, Alhamdulillah, Sheikh is here just in time. Um, so, uh, Sheikh, um, Salaam Alaikum. Yeah. Wa Alaikum uh, Salaam. It's actually we're actually in a recording, uh, and um, yeah. So actually, uh, we we're hoping that we could go over this with you. Um, so basically, what I was showing the brothers was, and maybe actually the recording could even start from here again. Um, yeah. So I wanted for us to discuss Surah Al Qamar. And the reason being is because, um, yeah, today's portion, if you're reciting according to the moon, yeah, then today's portion includes Surah Najm and Surah Al Qamar, which is uh, one of the five surahs to recite today. And um, so, yeah, I mean, if you remember when we went over Surah Rahman, you know, that was mind blowing in itself when it, Brother Imran showed us about those uh, verses repeating themselves, uh, was it 31 times? Mm -hmm. and yeah. 
So here, I just wanted to point out the reason why I wanted to speak about Surah Al-Qamr is because just like how in Surah Rahman, we spoke about which is repeated 31 times. And that was in Surah 55. So Surah Rahman was Surah 55. And preceding that shape, I don't know if you noticed this, but preceding that in Surah Rahman, Surah 55, there's 55 verses in Surah Al-Qamr the moon and um, yeah before that in Surah Najm verse 55 and this is where I'd like to get your take Sheikh, um, in Surah Najm verse 55 is very similar to the repeated verses in Surah Rahman and verse 55 in Surah Najm is I just found it very interesting that they're very similar and so the reason, yeah, the reason why I wanted to go through this is because Sheikh Imran Hussain is saying about reciting according to the moon. And I think there's so many signs within this Quran that's still to be revealed of why to recite according to the moon. And I think it actually lies in Surah al qamar where Allah repeats a verse four times. So, uh, yeah, we were just going through that. And... Uh, yeah, what are your thoughts so far as before we carry on, Sheikh? Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. From Sutul Najm onwards, actually this whole group of surahs, they have the highest peak of eloquence within the Qur'an itself. So, you know, the Qur'an itself has the highest peak. I mean, the Prophet said about himself, in afsahul arab I'm the most beautiful or the most afsah, most fasih, most classical speaker, you can say, of the Arabs, the Prophet said about himself. Then, of course, above that is the Quran. And then within the Quran, the you can say the wordings of this group of surahs, Surah Al-Waqiyah, Surah Rahman, Surah Al-Qamar, Surah Al-Tur, Surah Al-Najm, they are the peak of the eloquence within Quran. And it is these verses that Quran is saying, come back to Quran. Mm -hmm. And so, um, so the, you know, and in one of the things that's very uh, common in this group of surahs is that uh, the certain themes or ayat are repeated over and over again. Maybe not as much as Surah Rahman, but uh, even in Surah Al-Waqiyah, you'll see a common rhythm, you know, uh, being repeated uh, in some slightly different ways. So, for example, as sabiqun, as sabiqun, ulaika al muqarrabun, right? Ulaika uh, ashabu al yamin, ulaika ashabu al shimal, and like this, you'll find similar uh, wordings. But in Surah Al Qamar, uh, you find this. Walakad yassarna al Quran li dikri, fahal min mudakir. One relationship that Surah Rahman has with Surah Al-Qamar that would be interesting for you guys, because this would put some of you maybe in a little bit of a jeopardy, but there is a, a link. And that is the same verse that you mentioned. Ya ma'asha al-jinni wal-insi in istata'atum an tanfuzu min aqtari samawati wal-ardi falfuzu la tanfuzu na illa bi sultan. 33, verse number 33. Yes, but ayah number one of Surah Al-Qamar relates to this hmm. oh um here this one right iktarabat is sa'a wa shakka al qamar shakka means to cut shakka hmm. also means what we call in arabic khafara khafara means to dig out okay so iktarabat is sa'a digging out the moon yeah right so one is, of course, the, the asbab al-nuzul, yani ta'wil al-khas, which is related to the time of the Prophet. The Prophet pointed to the moon, and the moon was split. But the other possible meaning is, iktarabat is sa'a, the hour has come near now, and they have now gone to the moon and cut it out. Mm. Okay. Oh, so this, that, that, that now, starts the events, basically. That leading starts the out. events, and then that relates to Rahman, Ya Ma'ashal Jinni Wal Inzi. Now that you think you went this far, you think you're going to get farther, and you're going to actually, like, you know, now you're having bigger dreams. It's not going to happen. It's that very way. interesting, yeah. Very interesting. Sheikh, uh, there is definitely a reason that uh, you mentioned Surah Qamar, Surah Najm. These are the most beautiful surahs. 
And these are also the surahs which are uh, talking, appealing, basically appealing to people to come back to the Quran because mm -hmm. if you want to attract someone, you have to beautify it. Like if, uh, mm -hmm. let's say, if uh, if uh, if I if there is a if I if I want to attract a female, I have to look a my best. Spouse, let's call it. Yes, if I have, want to attract a female, I want to look my best. I want yeah, to appeal. Rahman is a Rusul Quran, right? It is the the bride of Quran. Yeah. I, I want mm. to appeal. So I want to, to appeal to her. Uh, uh, similarly, that's why these surahs are the most beautiful because the poetic language, the beautification, the adornment. It's appealing to the people. And to what's interesting about Sutul Qaf, Sutul Dariyat, and uh, then Sutul Tur, Sutul Najm, Sutul Qamar, Sutul Rahman, Sutul Waqia, they all talk about the cosmos at the bigger macro level. So, for example, uh, let me uh, just point out. So, you have Sutul Qaf, I just, uh, uh, you know, at, at the bigger macro level, Sutul Qamar. In Sutul, for example, Dariyat, if you also, this is part of one of those beautiful, very beautiful surahs. Uh, if we, you know, um, if we go to Sutul Qamar, for example, I just, uh, no, uh, Sutul Dariyat, if you start from there. So basically, uh, the way it works is Sutul Fat and Sutul Hujrat, they're like twin surahs. Okay. Let me actually go back, if you can give me a list of surahs of the Quran, so I can give you a little bit of the... Yeah. the so today's portion, yeah, today's portion are these beautiful ones. Kaf, yes, Adariya, yeah. Tur, Najam, Kam, yeah. Yeah, over here I just want to point out, if you uh, go up a little bit, okay, uh, keep going up till I, uh, no, 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 sorry, go down. I, I said it the wrong way. Go, down, keep going down, keep going down. There are 12 surahs in Quran, basically, I'm trying to point out, that talk directly to the Muslims. 12 mm -hmm. surahs. Mm -hmm. So if you notice this group ends with, if you go up to Sutul Hujat and Sutul Fatr. So Sutul Hujat is directly talking to the Muslim community. Yeah, it talks right? about a behavior, basically. Right. Sutul Hujat and Sutul Fatr are both directly talking to the Muslims and how Muslims need to organize themselves politically and socially, both the surahs. Okay. Okay. Then from Sutul Hadid, which is the most comprehensive surah of the Quran, okay? Sutul Hadid, if you go up, just keep going up, keep going up, keep going up, keep going up, 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 up. Okay, yes, there, okay. So right after Sutul Waq, after this group of beautiful surah ends, now there's 10 surahs here that are talking directly to the Muslims. Most of the Ya'yuhul Ladina Amalus are between Sutul Hadid and Sutul Tahrim. Okay? And then Sutul Mulk to Sutul Nas is all about the Day of Judgment mostly. Okay? All right? So now in this group of surahs, before Allah talks to the Muslims, Allah is talking to the Muslims in this 10 surahs and the two surahs before, okay? In the middle is these surahs that are the ah, peak of eloquence. Right. Okay? In the middle is these surahs that right. are the peak of eloquence. Now, let me now just go back to, uh, so the Najm is clear. It's talking about Mi'raj, right? So that's mm -hmm. the cosmos, okay? Now, uh, if you go to Sutta Dariyat, I'll share, share with you some interesting stuff there too. Uh, if you go to ayah number where Allah says, Wasama'i dhatil hubuk, which uh, comes right, uh, let me just make it easier for you. Hold on. And so I just wanted to say this one thing because there's something just came to my mind that how uh, Sheikh just said that, you know, first comes the beauty of the Quran, then comes the Muslims. And then comes, if you looked at it, it came Surah, you know, in those groups with the Surah Jinn. So just like the first ayah of the Quran is Bismillah mm. ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. And the last ayah of the Quran, Min al-Jinnati wa nas. Mm. So it's mm. the it's the Quran, the beauty, you know, and then Surah, obviously Surah Fatiha. And then at the end comes the Jinn who are, you know, uh, taking people yeah. to the moon, to space you and know. all of that. <laughs> <laughs> right. So now, if you go to ayah number seven of Surah Dariyat, which so ayah seven, seven, if you start from there, right? Was samaidatul hubuk, and by the sky that is full of pathways. This can be wormholes. Mm -hmm. This can be even the string theory that they're talking about. Or because hubuk means string or rope. Okay. So mm -hmm. was the the sky that is that is a fabric like a string, you know, fabric of this. So this is all talking about. The cosmos. Then, if you go down to ayah number Dariyat, I will share with you. Um, yeah, 
you know, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then says uh, about, uh, and I'll explain this verse a little bit so that you have an understanding from both uh, the spiritual as well as the other perspective. Uh, uh, ayah number 47 of 47. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So yes. ayah number 47 also was Sama'a Banaynaha bi Aydin. And we have created the sky with our hands. Okay. The two hands is the uh, 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 the, uh, the 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 uh, the world of Amr, the command, and the world of Tahlik, the creation. Allah Khalq wal Amr. These are the two worlds Allah has created. But here it was Sama ibn Ainaha, we created it, the Aydin with our two hands. Wa inna la wa inna and we are expanding it. Right. Mm. This is now talking about that we're that universe that you want to leave, right? How can you leave it? It's always expanding. Oh, right. Okay? You can't leave it. It's always expanding. It's always getting bigger. Mm. And so uh, this is the internal logic of Quran, meaning you have to, there's an, because when you uh, connect verses, then you get to see the internal logic that are all fitting. Mm. Right? That, you see, that, yeah, that's, that's what I'm beginning to realize because it's kind of scattered. You have to kind of connect them um, like to a high level, yeah. Right, and yeah. Yeah, we could talk about that too. So, yeah. uh, so was Samai uh, was Banaina uh, habi aidi wa inna laha la musiun. We're expanding it, but also just at a very general level, it also fits in Quran. Why? Because Allah is Al Khalik. So Al Khalik yeah. will create regardless. He's a creator. He can mm-hmm. never not. He can never not create. Meaning right. that's his sifat. That's what. That's he's one, yes. Yes. And what the opposite thing, the, the opposite thing that I see here, I mean, we're gonna have to forgive me for all these numbers, but four no, plus no, but four plus seven is eleven. Mm. Those are the two yeah. gates. You know how they had 9-11 and they brought those towers down. And if you look at there's always these two tower, there's two numbers that are and they're trying to get through this gateway. They're trying to, I don't know, unleash the you know Shayateen through that gateway. But this right, is right, right. this is the opposite end of I think the surah is that um, this is what they're trying to do is through this portal. It, it can't happen. What they're trying to do can't yeah. happen. Right. Exactly. Yeah. So so back back to this, if we can. Um, I just wanted to focus on Surah Al Qamar, Sheikh, because um, mm-hmm. uh, it's just something that I feel like is directing us uh, if the hour is drawn near. Because the reason why I picked out Surah Al Qamar is because if I'm right, Sheikh. There's only two surahs in the entire Quran that begins with the verse mentioning Asa, the hour. And so there's the only two surahs is Surah Al Hajj, yeah, which is this verse, the first verse. Ya ayyuhan nasu taqu rabbakum inna zalzalata sa'ati shayun azim. And there's only one other surah that begins with the mention of Asa. Which but is Surah is indirectly mentioned in the Rahman and also indirectly mentioned. Yes, in yes, yes, yes. Yep, yep, of course. But I was just wondering, Quran. so I just did a search. Yeah, I was just yeah over here, yeah. make a distinction between Sa'a and Yom al Qiyamah. Right, right. Sa'a is the moment the earth starts to. That's the hour where the earth right. begins to shake, where the right. waters become fiery. Where the, right. the hell Mountains. inside the earth, the lava Actual. inside the earth comes out. The actual okay? and, when, and when the earth will be extended, meaning right. made flat out, and there will be no okay. mountains and no valleys. So this okay. is the sa'a is the moment the earth starts to shake. Yeah. So so in this Surah Al Qamar, this is uh, mentioned four times verse 17, verse 22, verse 32, and verse 40. And what we were pointing out is that Sheikh Imran Hussain says that uh, Al-Quran is a recitation and not something you read, like how we've been kind of uh, misled to believe, you know, when uh, that verse, Ikra, Bismi Rabbi Kaladi Kalak, I always grew up hearing that it was read in the name of your Lord. But we understand now, is that right, Sheikh, that uh, Al-Quran is the recitation? The proper uh, meaning would be, let me just mention here, yeah. The word Quran, uh, from an etym- from the etymology of the word, either it is Qara'a, is the root word Qara'a, and then from Qara'a yeah. to Quran, or the root word is Qarana. Okay, Qaran. Qaran means to compose something, which means to recite something. Right. 
In uh, Qara'a also means to recite something. Qirat. Qirat, qirat word comes from this the, this root word also, right? Which means to yeah, it's recite. Same word. Yeah. yeah, it's the same word. Yeah. yeah. So, so whether you take it in the meaning of composition or, and by the way, Qaran, like Lul Qarnain is the same word. Okay. If you take it Qaf, Ra, Noon. Okay. Ah, uh, yeah. But if you take it as Qara, A, Qaf, Ra, Hamza. Mm -hmm. Okay, because these are the two possibilities with the word Quran. Right. So Qara na would mean like when you have two horns, there, 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 there's symmetry, right? Mm -hmm. There's two symmetrical things. So the idea of it being composition. So Qara mm -hmm. more does not mean read in the sense that we say the word read. Right. Okay. Humble. But okay. in both of the meanings, so the, my point was in both of the meanings, it right. means recite. Yeah. Both. So I just, yeah, so so just to check what Sheikh Imran Hussain is trying to say about the recitation according to Kamun, I wanted to go through those verses. And um, so obviously, um, if that verse says the hour has drawn, uh, I know Sheikh Imran Hussain also emphasizes this about is it that time will get faster or is it our perception of time that will get faster? And what Sheikh Imran Hussain is saying is it's, it's clearly our perception of moving away from being our hearts being in sync with the moon. And how do we bring that back? And he says that's by reciting according to the moon. Um, and yeah, so how will you? Yeah, um, so the first verse. And when you recite, yeah. So why why do we recite according to the moon? Because Allah says in this verse, uh, Sheikh. Um, maybe you can tell us about this verse. Um, can you see it? Yeah, yeah, I can see it. Yeah. A hijab, uh, basically. Yeah, a protection. And this is why I picked up this picture, actually, because it's Prophet Daniel being protected by the angels um, for staying firm, and I just like that. And so when Sheikh Imran Hussain said, this is actually why I started reciting according to the moon, because he said that's the protection you that's, need. That's the, the way I'm reciting, too, the way Sheikh Imran yeah. Hussain. Right, okay. And uh, um, this is also, by the way, uh, I don't know if how many people realize this, but this is completely in con in concordance to Mona Farahi's opinion. Okay. Hmm. Mona Farahi came up with the same basic idea of the grouping of surahs, not in terms of recitation. He didn't mm -hmm. say anything about recitation, but he grouped the surahs very, very similarly to the way Sheikh Imran Hussain has grouped the recitation. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, yeah. so, so I'm just going to mention. I just that. met a brother last week and he said that there's another grouping as well of seven groupings of the Quran or something. Uh, That's that. the Mona Farahi grouping. Right, okay. And um, But he says Sheikh, it's according my, to the Sheikh, my, my, my question would be then, uh, okay, maybe maybe it's, it's coming up. You said brother of is the Muqtasim. Yeah, yeah, sorry, yeah. So, uh, so let me just get to that. Let me just get to that. So uh, why do we recite this Quran? Because when you recite the Quran, we put between you and those who do not believe hereafter, in the hereafter, a concealed partition. So this is our barrier, isn't it? Between them who are trying to cause trouble to us. Uh, this is yeah, Allah giving us divine protection by reciting this Quran. This is what why Sheikh, yeah, one of the so I went through Sheikh Imran Hussain's book, and this is why I point, uh, came across this verse. And um, so this is the protection. And what's the next one? And also, yeah, Sheikh, so, uh, when, when the recitation yeah. part of it, when Ibrahim salam, was put in the fire, didn't Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala recite to the fire to be cool? Yeah, Allah gave a command to it. So when he, so it is in a sense. I mean, this is the kind of the opposite of it. Allah Subhanahu uh, commanded or recited. So now we are to recite His word. I mean, it's words of Allah, right? It's the words yeah. of Allah, and you're all about, it's, you're it's harnessing all about words. the power. You're harnessing yeah. the power of the words of Allah. Yeah, right. And th that's so, why. That's why Sheikh, someone like, uh, reminds me of someone like Anthony Patch, because. Uh, uh, it is uh, some uh, like there are some Christians who are very high on high intellect, high guidance, and you can ask yourself, well, if Muslims have the truth, how come we see all these Muslims who are not uh, realizing the deception, and how, how come mm -hmm. this Christian is realizing the deception? Maybe it's because the Christian he's in touch with his scripture, but the mm -hmm. Muslims are not properly in tune with their own. Scripture. Mm, so, it, so it ultimately comes down to. I mean, it can go both ways. I mean, I, I want to uh, make this. Yes, of course. Alhamdulillah, some of us have the sirah on what's happening, but we don't know what's good and what's wrong. It's like uh, Khidr breaking the boat. 
For yes. some people, maybe it's good that they don't know. True. That could be a mercy for a lot of people. Could be. Ignorance. Right? That, you know, that could be a mercy for a lot of people. And then for a lot of people, it might be a good thing. That's how their death was written. We don't know the outcome. We don't know the result. We don't. We are living in a time where it's very hard to say that this is absolutely the right or this is the absolute wrong, mm. because you know it, we're. It's it's very hard to take a very uh, extreme stance and, yeah. and be firm on it. Okay, which is why the the Sharia left some of these things open for a reason. Mm. Okay, a so, lot of people so, yeah. don't know what they're. They don't know what they're in, and. Mm. Uh, uh, Allahumma salli ala Muhammad and yeah absolutely we, but that your main point is correct we are so far away from Quran that it is absolutely unbelievable because none of us are geniuses okay mm. and uh, what we what uh, Allah shows us sometimes is maybe more than what an institute would even discover mm. okay but the reason is because they're far away from Quran and even the Islamic institutes like uh, the Islamic University of Islamabad, like the Islamic University of, uh, of uh, Malaysia, uh, like all these different Islamic institutes, even when they look at something, the world around them, their frame of reference is Islamic law. They're looking at the Sharia to look at the world, rather than using the Quran to look at the world. And that is a problem because that's like the, 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 the Jews looking at the world through Talmud instead of Torah. Which is what Quran claims them for. You threw away Torah and took the Talmud. And so we've done the same thing. Is that uh, the, the problem is that Muslims are using their intellect with Islamic law with a certain level of assumption. For example, look at money. It's very easy to understand that this money is not real money, but only if you're looking through Quran. If you're looking through Islamic law, well, then you're going to assume money is money, right? The, you, you, you start with certain givens. Perception. The perception, right? Mm -hmm. the Quran challenges those basic assumptions and mm -hmm. those basic perceptions to begin with. Right. Which, when you are a Muslim and you're only looking at Islamic law, then you, yeah. will, you will not be challenging those perceptions. You will accept things as they're given to you. Right. But on that note, because of this difference in perception and the dis disagreements and the differences, that's why now more than ever, I just wanted to go through this about the Quran, because this is the one thing that we all unite on. The Quran is the absolute truth. And the Quran, you know, you just can't deny what Allah says in the Quran versus itself. And so um, that's why I'm hoping that this might help some people, especially right now, you know, when everyone's prepping and everyone's trying to figure out how to solve problems maybe this might help because yeah Shaykh Imran Hussain says about reciting the Quran and why recite this Quran what's different about this Quran because it is a noble noble uh, Quran if Allah says it is a noble Quran maybe you, you can help us out Shaykh because Allah doesn't say something like that just like that and um, yeah so I'm just wondering isn't it worth finding out uh, how noble this Quran is and you just find it in the next verse, I think. Is it the next verse? Yeah. So Allah says it's, uh, it's a noble Quran. And the next verse is, in a register well protected. So yes. this Quran is well protected, as Sheikh Imran Hussain points out. Um, so what does that mean, Sheikh? If Allah is saying in this one that this is well protected, what does that indirectly mean? That means that we can become well protected. Okay. By touching Quran. But la yumasu illa mutahharun. You can't touch it unless you purify yourself first. Right. I thought I thought I was gonna thing. I was gonna say this, Sheikh, yeah. because uh, by touching it doesn't. Uh, uh, Sheikh Imran Hussain once said, even even George Bush can touch the Quran. I mean, <laughs> not touching it means like penetrating yes, the Quran. Yeah, that's, that's the but next. No one. matter how much you penetrate, it's like yeah. touching. Yeah, you never can penetrate in the true so, sense of the word. But Sheikh, you know this bit register well protected. I thought that would mean that if Allah says in this one that this fi uh, kitab if uh, if Allah is saying that this is well guarded, then that means Allah is saying in, indirectly that the previous ones are not. Yeah. Okay. Because if Allah makes a point to say that this one is, then that means that He's made an emphasis. Only this one is protected. Um, well, uh, if I go into the tafsir of this al kitab, hmm. okay, can mean uh, is could be referring to 
uh, see, okay, let me, so let me give you just an example. You can bring it up over here so everyone can also see this point, okay? First, go to ayah number 177 of Sul Baqarah. This of Al Kitab, this, I want to make this clear. Uh, 177. Okay. So now, okay, those who, Man Amana Billahi Wal Yomil Akhiri Wal Malaikati Wal Kitab, singular book, one book, Al Kitab, not Kutub. Okay. Those who believe in the book. Versus the last, second last ayah of Sul Baqarah. Oh, no, last day, the angels. Are you saying this is singular, the book? It's is singular, right. Al-Kitab, if you bring it down, I'll show you. Mm -hmm. okay. Yes, yes. So Al -Kitab and how, do you, how do you reconcile Al-Kitab? Mm -hmm. Because uh, the Nabiyin is plural. Mm. That's a very interesting point, actually. But does does okay. it does it mean all all of all of Allah's books are considered as one thing? No. Okay. So I'm coming to that. So now go to the last second last ayah of the Baqarah. Okay. Uh, okay. So now over here, Kutubihi, his books. It's mm. in Jama Mukassaf, mm. and uh, it uh, his books. Who believe in his books? All the books. So yeah, so there's a distinction. You still believe in the, all the books, but there's a distinction. The Al-Kitab yeah. is the Quran, but mm -hmm. the previous ones were being, you can say, edited. They mm -hmm. were never complete. corrupted. Yeah, they were never, no, but they were never thought to be complete. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Today we have completed your deen. Meaning now Quran is complete. Mm -hmm. See. We, uh, let me just make this point clear. The laws that were there previously, they all continued. Prayers continued, fasting continued, jihad continued, all the laws continued. But more were added as social evolution took place. As you went from a cave to tribe, to multi-tribe, to empires, your laws increased. You can't give laws of riba to people that don't have riba, right? So, the, the, so the point I'm trying to make is that Al-Kitab, okay, over here I also want to mention something else. Mm -hmm. What is the difference between this and Ummul Kitab and Lahul Mahfuz? So there, this is... Uh, but it is the Quran Al-Lahul Mahfuz. So Lahul Mahfuz has many books. The mother of that book, the mother of the books in Lahul Mahfuz is Quran, including what? Your, uh, your book, your record is also there. And it is judged based upon the mother book, where you stand. Yep. Sheikh, uh, I, I wanted to say one thing. Maybe, maybe that's, big, uh, that's why uh, all the other books, scriptures were books, but this is named Quran because it's a recitation. That's why it's protected. The other, uh, the other scriptures they could be edited because they were books. They were literal uh, mm. scriptures, scrolls. Mm. Mm. But this Quran cannot be corrupted because it's not a scripture. A it's, 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 it's a recitation. Book. It's a recitation. Yes. And Sheikh, as as Sheikh Imran Hussein says, it's not in the physical world. It's in the auditory world. It's in the yes. world of sound. So that's, that's, that's why this verse. So that's say. this verse. Why Sheikh Imam Hussein says exactly. And that's why. It. That's that's so why if, if Quran, it cannot be corrupted. Yeah. Yeah. So Sorry. that's what Sheikh Imam Hussein says. That if Quran is a recitation, which is vocal, yeah, comes out of your voice box, then what is Allah saying? That you can't touch the recitation except the purified. So that means your ears. So if it's vocal. It's something that your ears are receiving. It's got nothing to do with your hands touching paper or book. It's about your ears and therefore your hearts. What do you think, Imran? Yeah. I, I think this is that that's very unique. But you know, to touch something, I mean, maybe Sheikh can help me with this one. To touch something is to grab the essence of something. And if you can't grab the essence of something, you cannot understand it. And to understand the Quran, you need it. It's a spiritual touch, meaning to gain the knowledge from. This is what Sheikh, Sheikh uh, Omar here is saying that uh, the purifying the heart. The none can touch it except the ones who have purified their heart, mm. and that is through. 
And, and uh, also, uh, just to just to add to this, I want to share with you. If you go to ayah number seventy-six of this surah, yes, yes. What was that? 56, 76. 76. Super luck, yeah. Mm. Uh, the ayah before this. Oh, oh, yeah, because I thought I had this one. Okay. Oh, yes. Well, that, yes. In the room. Again, this yep. is the universe, right? Mm -hmm. I swear by the places where waqa'a, mm -hmm. like the waqa'a, Mm -hmm. Waqia has also two meanings. One is to occur. One, mm -hmm. waqia also means sakata. Sin kata. Sakata means to collapse. Okay? Right. Of course, the Sahaba, they knew the stars occurred. They knew what the, that the stars occurred. They were looking at the stars happening. Right? Mm -hmm. So when the Quran says, فَلَا أُقْسِمُ بِمَوَاقِئِ النَّجُومِ إِنَّهُ قَسَمٌ لَوْ تَعْلَمُونَ عَظِيمٌ This is a great oath if you did but know. But mm. wait, I do know, they do occur. Mm. But if you take it in the other meaning, فَلَا أُقْسِمُ بِمَوَاقِئِ النَّجُومِ I swear by the places where the stars collapse. Which mm -hmm. is right. Black holes. Okay. إِنَّهُ لَا قَسَمٌ لَوْ تَعْلَمُونَ عَظِيمٌ uh, It is a very big oath that if you did but know. This is a very Kareem Quran, a very generous Quran, a yeah. very noble Quran. It yeah. gives to everyone. Yeah. Right? Just like each, uh, well, we can go into that. But yeah, no, no, no you, you're, you're absolutely right. I don't know how I missed this up because this, this is exactly how Sheikh Amran Hussain says, but it's like there's something we don't know. Uh, but this is what Allah is directing us to, to you know, um, but we don't know. Um, yeah, so it's it's all in these verses that are uh, great. Also, together. notice the word Kareem is used for Quran in the first revelation. Ikra, bismi rabbika alladhi khalaq, khalaq al-insana min alaq, ikra wa rabbuka al-akram. Akram, akram, okay. Alladhi khalaq, uh, you know. Illam al-Quran. So, akram, Allah is akram and Quran is Kareem. Yeah. Yasin wal-Quran al-Kareem. Mm -hmm. This Quran can enlighten every person individually, mm -hmm. just like the stars are enlightened. Mm -hmm. Everyone, the Quran can give, make everyone into a torch. Mm -hmm. Just, just like the, just like the stars, Sheikh, the the light. Yeah, of the stars the comes within my companions were like stars. They were all touched by the light of Quran. Mm -hmm. Because Sheikh, the Quran is there, is 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 inside you. The Quran it becomes a part of you. It, like uh, like a half is. Quran is already part of your thinking, part of how you see the world. You know, people see big buildings and they say, "Wow, dunya." You're like, "Oh, astaghfirullah, this is gonna this is gonna collapse. It's riba." Yeah. Right. So you see the world differently. So it enlightens you. Mm -hmm. Just like the stars, the light comes from within. And if you can touch the Quran, the light is going to come within you, just like the stars and recitations, the same thing. It's all a part of the natural world, right? Yep. So, so we're looking up for the answers, but Allah is telling us what came from where we're looking up. And mm. it's this that came from up there, the revelation that came down from the skies. And just, and like, uh, just, like, how, just like how Shaitan says, as above, just below, it's the same thing. We're just flipping it back to its original form <laughs> where, yes, the stars that are above, the nur yeah. that comes from that stars, you can have the same nur that's inside of you, but you have to yeah. purify what's inside of yourself. Yeah, absolutely. Sheikh, I want to throw this idea at you and maybe you can uh, comment. So uh, when I uh, when I was thinking how Surah Kahf will be prote protection against the job. So perhaps it can be that uh, the uh, when the job is here already or before he comes, the recitation of Surah Kahf itself and the memorization it uh, your recitation performs uh, or creates something in the auditory world. Perhaps there is a hijab. Perhaps it creates something, and there is a thing, but you cannot see it. But Allah places Allah Allah places that thing between you and the jaw when you recite Surah Kahf, so that there is an actual protection, an actual hijab, or an or, or there might be portals opening for you. Who knows? Maybe the Ashabul Kahf, they were protected by portals. Uh, like they slept for 300 years, right? Maybe Allah opened a portal for them. Uh, maybe they recited something. And 
that opened the portal. So maybe when we are in the phase of the jaw, we are we recite Surah Kahf, and the recitation itself gives a, creates something from the sound. What do you think of this? Absolutely. I mean, the one of the things that we know, for example, one of the um, <coughs> miracles the jinn world experiences is that as soon as Quran is recited, they start burning. This is something like every jinn that has been near Quran knows. You know, when they every jinn knows as soon as the azan is recited, you better run. It's going to burn you. Oh, I'll keep up you with know, that one. <laughs> you know. The, the, the absolutely either, either the something about this physical sound or something about saying those words that were Allah's kun, part of Allah. I mean, it's the same, the same eternal speech of Allah, the one who said Quran also said kun for many, many different things. It's the same power being harnessed. Mm. And, uh, and so, you know, so uh, when you recite Quran, it definitely will have an impact at many, many unseen levels. Mm. In the jinn world, it's actually at the scene level because, like I said, uh, when uh, you know, one of the things that I've seen scholars do uh, is that they will say to the jinn, the person that has the jinn in them, they will say to the jinn, "Don't you see the effect of Quran on you? Don't you see mm -hmm. the effect of Quran on you?" Mm -hmm. Right? And uh, and and so uh, you know, so anyway, so it's a miracle known in the jinn world. That uh, that Quran has an effect, and uh, what about the Muslim jinn? How how uh, how are they uh, protected? Then I mean, if, 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 so is it something related to jinn belief no, or? I, I, I will I will I can answer that question. When a jinn becomes Muslim, it's almost as if his wavelength or his being has changed. He goes from wanting to be near toilets and dirt and poop and these things to all of a sudden wanting to be near flowers and fruits and mm. trees and bones and you know different things that uh, this is why the prophet says your brothers amongst the jinns they eat the bones right mm. because that's what the good jinns do Interesting. Right? so and and uh, so anyway this is a, a longer discussion yeah yeah but the point uh, i'm trying to make here is that definitely definitely in the jinn world it is known and i've heard it with my own ears that a, a jinni once told me that uh, that w when she heard someone reciting Quran, it like completely just uh, like threw her off. Like she got scared and she ran away just mm -hmm. by hearing Quran. So Powerful. it has that effect upon me, yes. And so uh, one of the things, you know, that uh, I've been always holding on to is, uh, you know, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala created Adam alayhi salam, or when he created insan, it is something that emits sound. So it's frequency. Mm -hmm. Right, and this is what the Quran is. Right? So frequency is something you cannot see, but you can feel. Yeah, and Allah yeah. What, when He created the heavens and the earth, then Allah Subhanahu wa Taala used frequency when He said to the earth and the heavens, "Do you come willingly or do you not?" So this is again I mean, frequency, yeah. and so this is something yeah, and, and that the Shaitan aspect, has. The other aspect of that that I'd like to share with you is Ar Rahman wa Alam al Quran Khalaq al Insan Alam al Bayan. That's where I was going. <laughs> See, mm. Quran yeah, is, no, no, this is what Quran, I remember. Yeah. Quran is words, and human beings think in words. Mm -hmm. We think in words. Mm -hmm. So we don't think in smells. Like it's dogs. all about words. Yeah, it's all about and, words. And Allah so Allah Allah teach words, yeah. Adam yeah. Salam words. So, mm -hmm. And that's the point, right? Mm -hmm. so, Adam al -asma kullaha, but it doesn't mean all the words. Mm -hmm. He didn't teach kullaha here, it means kullaha of what was taught to him. Mm -hmm. Okay, why? What's the proof of that? Because yeah. the next verse after that, after a few verses, Allah says, Adam yeah. And Adam met with Allah, got inspiration from Allah how to do Tawbah. Mm -hmm. So he didn't know the words of Tawbah. Yeah. So he was not taught all the words in the sense of all the words. Actually, what happened is Allah. Angels know things innately. They don't have the ability and the capacity to keep learning and keep learning and keep learning and keep learning. Mm -hmm. It's not yeah. X plus one plus one. So, you know, what's also interesting in that passage of the Quran, that Allah didn't teach the angels. Allah only taught Adam. And, but he tested the angels. See, one thing is, if Allah would have taught the angels and then Allah taught Adam, and then he's okay, tell me the name of these things. That's not what happened. Allah taught only Adam. 
because he was the only one that had the capacity to look at something and name it. That's the human capacity to make the periodical chart, to categorize things, to name things, to name concepts. That's how we work. And if you study in philosophy, the subject of semiotics, right? It's all about how we, everything that we, the, the way the brain works is by making signs or understanding signs because nothing is in itself of itself. What I mean is, for example, uh, if I have keys here, I don't say metal, I say key, right? So at, at the everything, very beginning, is an, everything is an idea. Yes. So everything is something other than itself, meaning its function in this case, which is the key. I don't say it's a metal, right? So uh, you, you can imagine some gyms coming along and looking at this and they would just think this is just metal. Right. We didn't yeah, think of this. And this is a kind of Shek, what Shek, when, when you when you give a sorry brother Mary, you can when you give a child uh, a chocolate he will automatically eat it he will not ask is this food he will not ask uh, he will he will just eat because it's an idea he already knows what 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 the thing is so everything is like an idea like a so words are just a used to describe ideas, I would say. In uh, fact, uh, if you want to go deeper in this, I'll just share one more verse with you. Uh, I won't go too deep. But the last, uh, the second last verse of Yasin. Inama amruhu idha arada shay'an. His, Allah's affair is that when he decides something, when he makes irada of something, he says to it. What do you mean? He says to it. It doesn't exist yet. Right? Exactly. exactly. When Allah decides arada shay'an anything. Okay. Essence. I was just gonna say that. What brother was saying about now the different uh, explanation scholars have given of Kun Fayakun. Does it really does Allah really say be or is this a metaphor for like Allah wanting something to happen? Mm -hmm. Or does Allah say the word? Right? Mm -hmm. Is it the irada of Allah or is it the word of Allah that is manifesting here? But the point is, when Allah says be, it already exists. Right? Yeah. And so, words are powerful, of course. Of course. And so, uh, the Prophet said, Inna min al -bayani sahrun. Indeed, there are people who speak like as it's magic, has a magical effect upon it. And that's how they do magic words. That's right. It? Yeah. So, uh, so Allah's affair is inama, inama is hasab, which means to make it exclusive. Inama amruhu, his command is ida arada shay'an, when he decides upon something, lahu, he says to it, which already exists. So it's not like Allah is going, okay, I'll decide what I'll do tomorrow. It's not like that. Everything is already decided. It's already in the book. And he yeah. says to the book that is there, and the mother of that book is Quran. That Allah says to that, uh, to, to what is already written, be, now you manifest yourself in the world of manifestation. Mm. From the Ummul Kitab, from Lahul Mahfuz, what is already written there, now something will manifest itself in our world. What we are doing by getting closer to Quran, we're harnessing the power of that Qun mm. Yeah, this is the whole point of doing this, because um, uh, just as Brother Imran said about the frequencies, what words are doing, uh, creating things just like how Allah created how you showed kun the word over oh, here I, I'd like to mention another thing if you look at like the example of Suleiman in the Afrit right so the Afrit when he said that I will bring the throne for you in in I will bring her great throne to you before you stand up from your place meaning at Dhuhr time when his majlis would come to an end he would stand up to leave by that time we'll have it for you but these jinns, they were free, they were masons, you know, they used to build things. So they were going to build what she had there over here. Okay. And they were going to do it within a few hours. You know, we'll be able to build this, right? So that's one interpretation, the one that I like. Okay. It's not that they're actually going to take her throne and put it there because I mean, later on when she looked at it, she didn't say this is that throne. She uh, said the anha hu. It's as uh, if it is that. Wow. So yeah, creating is, by spelling, uh, casting spells. Right. It is as if it is that. And what they, the, the, the Suleiman had them bring, build a similar throne and change the colors and different things. And to test her, 
uh, there were different uh, explanations of this, but uh, to have her feet lifted, for example, from the water also has to do with testing if she's, uh, how much uh, she's affected by the jinn world. I'm not going to go into that right now. But all I'm trying to say is to compare her with the man who had the knowledge of the book, who had harnessed the power of Kun Fafi. So in the jinn world, they know the people who have harnessed this power and they know that really what power they carry, okay? And, uh, and then they know, uh, you know, what they are able to do. That even the Afrit will take hours to build something. But the man of the in book of Allah, he can do something that uh, can be done very fast in, in comparison. Yes, so, so Sheikh, uh, on, on the next verse, um, so uh, going back to this whole thing about words being powerful, this is the most powerful words, which is Allah's words, the recitation. Here, I just want to just share with you one more example. If yeah. you don't mm -hmm. Musa alayhi salatu wasalam said to Allah, Anzu, I want to see you. Mm -hmm. Nantarani, you can't see me. Mm -hmm. But if this mountain stays in its place, then maybe sofa tarani, then you can make it see. Mm -hmm. When Allah manifested himself, whatever that was, when Allah manifested himself, and I've been there to see this place, mm -hmm. when Allah manifested himself, the mountain was crushed. Mm -hmm. The same thing Allah says, Lo anzalna hadal Qur'ana ala jabal. If we sent down this Qur'an on a mountain, it would be yes. crushed into pieces. Yes. Meaning, just, the just, word just, of Allah, just, the kalam of Allah, the word of Allah, and Allah, the Zati Bari Ta'ala, the person of Allah, the being of Allah. It can crush. It can crush. It can destroy. It's, it's the word is eternal and Allah is eternal. It has the mm -hmm. same effect. Interesting. Yeah. So, Sheikh, if, um, if this is, uh, if Allah claims that this is a Hakul Yaqeen, does that mean that um, there is nothing else that is uh, absolute certain truth? No. Nothing, in fact, in comparison to Allah and his words, everything is non-existent, as yeah, if not. Everything else is suspect, uh, suspicious, like uh, maybe true, not true. Only this is absolute true. Meaning on the one side, Allah says, خَلَقَ السَّمَاوَاتِ وَالْأَرْضَ بِالْحَقِ mm -hmm. We've created the heavens and the earth in truth, meaning with purpose, mm -hmm. right? مَا خَلَقْتَ هَذَا بَاطِلَ سُبْتِ الْعَلِمْ We have not created this in vain, without purpose. But all of creation, meaning in terms of, uh, I'll explain it to you this way. Allah sees and I see, right? But Allah seeing and my seeing, it's like I'm blind. I don't, it's like I don't even see compared to what Allah sees. Right. Allah is living and I'm also living. Mm -hmm. Is there any ratio proportion? Right. There's no ratio proportion. Right. As if I don't even, I'm already dead. Yeah, so that's like me saying this is certainly true. And the difference with Allah saying this is certainly true. The difference, you mean? Yes, exactly. Okay. So okay. in a sense, nothing exists hmm. except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Right. And nothing exists except for his word and the power of his word. Right. The reason why I ask is that is because... And you know, this is one of the du'as of the Prophet in Tahajjud. And tahakun wa qawluka haqqun wa liqa'aku haqqun wa muhammadun haqqun. You know, qawluka, your words are haqq. They're true. They're absolute truths. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because uh, Sheikh Imran Hussain says, you know, when it comes to certain hadith that seem to contradict what the Quran says, and uh, then he points out that only this is absolute truth, so you have to test it against this Quran. You know, if a hadith seems to be in conflict with this, and I think this is one of the verses he uses, that this is yeah. why, because this is the certain truth, this is the absolute truth, you have to test everything else against this Quran. And, um, yeah, so... Um, so why do you recite this one? Yeah. Uh, I wanted to bring up that story of Sulaiman because it pertains to the uh, to the word of Allah basically. Sheikh, I had a different uh, an interpretation. Maybe you can comment. So uh, when uh, Sulaiman asked who can bring the throne, the Ifrit replied, uh, "Before you stand from your seat," and then uh, the man said, "Before you blink." So it said about the man that he had this uh, this power because he knew uh, he knew Allah's word Allah's word better than anyone else. So this suggests to me that 
uh, he was the most learned of the scripture of that time. Maybe Sulaiman al Islam, he was given a book. I think this person knew the book better, uh, knew the book uh, as, as good as maybe Sulaiman al Islam. But the interpretation is maybe the utterance of the word, utterance of Allah's words from that man's uh, man created a portal for him from Sulaiman al-Islam's throne to the Queen of Sheba's throne. And he was able to enter into this portal, maybe like a wormhole. And that, like in Sulaiman al-Islam's time, uh, 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 Sulaiman al-Islam's uh, world, it was, uh, it was before he can even blink. But what the man has enough time in the portal to bring the throne itself via the portal. So, uh, and, and uh, people might ask, how can a man bring a portal? So there, there, there can be two scenarios here. Either he takes many ifrit with him through the portal and commands them to bring the throne. Or he, when he reaches the throne, there is energy situated uh, within the portal. Like for, uh, there is a, uh, the physics inside the portal is so different that the throne becomes a particular, like a throne becomes, a, the throne turns into atoms. And then he can bring this via the, via the portal to Suleiman's throne and reconstruct the throne. Reconstruct. So this sci-fi, is just a, sci-fi movie. Yeah. Star Trek. What do you think? What do you think? Of I mean, uh, as far as someone, we, we, we should not say someone knew more than Suleiman, just like we mm-hmm. cannot say Hitler knew more than Musa. Mm. The prophet of the time. We can't say that the, somebody knew more than the prophet of that time. But a certain knowledge, a certain specialty knowledge, like mm. that was given to Hitler, could be given to someone else. Uh, and, uh, you know, this happened even in the time of the prophet, that knowledge the prophet had not expressed, the Sahaba did, and then the prophet confirmed it. Even like it reading Fatiha, for example, if somebody is stung by a snake, for example, okay, the prophet confirmed, yes, this is right. And in another narration, the prophet said, how did you know this, right? So the prophet knew this, but he hadn't expressed it. The Sahaba discovered it themselves. Yeah. And so what the book of that time, which is a bull, okay? Which is a Buddha at that time, because Daud was given to Buddha and this is yeah. his son. So some people had access to either the names of Allah in Zubur or one of the uh, verses of Quran or, uh, or sorry, were verses of Zubur that they were able to say in a special way because the purpose of a prophet is guidance. And since this was not an issue of guidance, somebody else could have that, you can say, that specialty in a sense. Uh, as far as uh, having a portal and, uh, you know, this is, uh, again, make a distinction between what we know qat'i and what we know dhanni. Qat'i is what we know for sure. Right? Certain, yeah. Theoretically, it could be a hundred different possibilities. It could be a wormhole. It could be. Uh, because we have the verse of the Quran was Sama'idat al we just talked about. Mm-hmm. Okay, it could be a wormhole. Um, but it could also not be a wormhole. There's no way to say one thing or the other. So, But the issue that I think you're trying to say is that he knew something from the kalam of Allah that he was yes. able to bring that, uh, the arsh itself, from one place to the other. And that is a possibility. And Mufassirin have also mentioned that. Yeah, so... Um, it just yeah. goes to show you the power of Allah's words, basically. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. And on, on that, so with the power of the words, um, the, yeah, Allah says that this is a register well protected. And so I feel like it's confirmed. I mean, it's emphasized more by saying how certain truth. And then even more with this verse, with falsehood cannot approach it from before before it or behind it. I think, um, I'm not sure where I've come up with this, with this verse, but... So you, you're, you, this would apply to what you were saying about Hadith literature or <laughs> historical narrations that would contradict the Qur'an. Mm-hmm. And it, if it contradicts the Qur'an, right. then, you know, Batil can't enter the Qur'an, so Qur'an becomes the criterion. Mm-hmm. And especially in these times, the deceptive times, we're looking for what is real, what is true. And I, yeah, so it just gives more value to why we should recite this Quran because this is where, you know, everything else we're not sure about, you know, kind of losing your minds, what's real, what's not, what's, 
but this is absolute truth and falsehood cannot approach it. So yeah, this is our protection, the Quran. Yeah, the Quran is the protection. And um, yeah, this verse, uh, she came on the same points out as well. Why we should recite it the way we should recite it, Sheikh? What do you think about this verse? Sorry, right, no. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So Sheikh Ramana Singh says that um, I I don't want to keep saying that, but this is where I learned it all from. Sheikh Ramana Singh says that you know uh, this is how it was recited, and so it looks like. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Allah is clearly saying, then follow it. What does this word "fatabit" mean? Fatabit means to follow. Yeah. So if Allah says follow it, then it's a clear command. There is no other way of reciting. There is no it. other way. Yeah. This yeah, is there's the no way. other way of reciting it. The, you know, you know, I feel like we've all fell into this trap of where people have told you, oh, no, no, you should try to just read a few verses and uh, uh, understand it and maybe practice it. I feel like it's it's a way of leading us away from what Allah has actually told us to do, because I was in that as well. But then I was always I was always kind of like, oh, I could do a few verses today, maybe not a few verses tomorrow. You know, you just, Same. yeah, uh, it's up to you. But whereas when you find out that this is what this verse is saying, for me, it's just very clear. Follow exactly as as it was done, which was recited to, to Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam through Jibreel Alayhi Salam. Is that right? Oh, Sheikh, does this does this could also mean so when we recite it, then follow it or mean to act upon it? Because if you cannot follow, I mean, you know, to follow something is up to you have to act like it in a sense, follow in its footsteps. And when we have recited it, well, when Allah has recited it, then follow then act its recitation. Then act its recitation. Act meaning to uh, you know to pray your salah, to give your zakat to act upon it. I mean, it could, I mean, I don't know. It could just have that meaning, but uh, generally the uh, tafsir, when you take it in the context of the previous verses, because it's actually, mm -hmm. Oh, Prophet ﷺ, don't move your tongue quickly in trying to memorize the Quran. Uh, we will gather this in your heart and we will make you recite it. This is one interpretation. We will gather this Quran, meaning uh, the companions of the Prophet will gather this Quran and then it will become recited with the other meaning. And yes. then, uh, uh, yeah. and then, uh, yeah. and then uh, mm -hmm. uh, uh, and when the Quran has been recited, Quran. Then now you follow exactly the same way it's recited. Like how you do any teaching and learning. I do it, now you copy me. Uh, like the, that's the traditional way, right? Uh, I'll show you how to do it, now you do it. Yeah. And and yeah, so this is confirmed. That, that, again. That's actually how hadith is expected to be compiled. Right. You, you write exactly as you heard, mm -hmm. verbatim, mm -hmm. exactly as you heard. Yeah. So, so this, any, any, this, yeah. Yeah. so this is the verse Sheikh Imran Hussain uses. Saying that you follow just like how Jibreel alayhi salam recited to Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and then the next verse after that is verse nineteen. No, then, yeah. yes. then upon us is its clarification to you. Yes. The yeah. So I think Sheikh Imran Hussain says only by for only by following this recitation will you then will then things become clearer for you. I think yeah. is that what that means? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So if you really want to understand the Quran, then you have to do what Allah is telling you to do. That command, then you'll be given that gift. I think that's what that seems to me from what I've read. Um, well, well, there is one one caveat though, because uh, uh, people of that time, as they were reciting, they were also because they knew it was in their language, Arabic. Mm -hmm. They were also understanding. Yeah. So, uh, the, so for us English speakers, it might not be the case that we understand immediately yeah. after reciting, because well, we I still mean, have to learn the Arabic. Yeah, you're, you're right. But I mean, like, the, for example, today I recited, and that's how I picked up on this. I, did, I wasn't thinking about translation. I just picked up that this verse is there as I was reading it. Exactly. So then, and we we might so pick up patterns, yeah. but we will yeah, not patterns. pick up what, what the word means. You know, yeah, the yeah, word. Yeah. yeah. But even if you picked up one word a day. And you're yeah. reciting it's daily. Plenty, honestly, for me, I feel connected when I'm reciting, and I just feel one word. Yeah, it's a lot for me. Um, yeah. Then upon us is a clarification to you. 
Oh, and this bit. So this bit, Sheikh Ramadan Hussain doesn't say, but I want to ask you, this is what I see uh, when I see the next verse. No, but you love the immediate. So what is it you want to know now? Just like everyone wants to know everything now, everyone wants everything now. So instead of reciting, just like everyone yeah. doesn't want to do the hard work, they don't want to do the hard work, yeah, and then get the gifts. So what does Allah say? No, but you love the immediate. You want to know everything now. Yeah, fast, brother. Fast. Brother Imran knows knows a lot about this because I think he knows. Brother Imran, talk about the dopamine rush. The related to how does this yeah. verse relate to the so dopamine this rush? This is this is the thing. Um, when we were talking about the, you know how shaitan it has it, you know it has a big impact on technology and to, what does technology do it makes you into the fast life and what does the fast life produce in your brain it produces dopamine mm -hmm. and this is why people can't this is why people love the immediate exactly this is exactly mm -hmm. why they immediate because it's a dopamine rush and once you don't get the dopamine rush you don't like when you call upon Allah subhanahu wa and you don't get it right away, you have to, because Allah subhanahu wa works just like nature. It takes time. It yeah. doesn't come to you right away. After dua, after dua, after dua, after mm -hmm. patience and experience, then you get it. Yeah. But it's the dopamine hate, rush. Yeah. But it's the dopamine rush that you would get from technology uh, that makes you love the immediate. Yeah, yeah. That's definitely training for us to look for the immediate gratification. In, in but, context of the surah, uh, let me just uh, shed yeah, some please, light yeah. that might be interesting. So the, this is one of the few surahs that the title of the surah is the theme of the surah. So the Qiyama, the and the whole surah is on mm -hmm. Except mm -hmm. these verses. Right, okay. Because, you know, just like if a teacher is teaching a class and he sees one student is, you know, doing his little thing or reading it or maybe mm -hmm. texting or whatever, right? So then he stops the lesson and he tells him, hey, hey, you can't do that. Right. And then he goes back to the lesson. Right. So if you can, if you take out these verses and connect mm -hmm. it to back to its original lesson, mm -hmm. then it becomes Balil insanu ala nafsihi basira walau alqa ma'adira and then bal tuhibbun al ajila. So that, see, uh, Jibreel interjected and said, hey, hey, don't, it's okay. You don't have to go fast. It'll come. Right. right. It's on us. We will. Right. The prophet was the only Hafiz who didn't have to do hymns. Mm -hmm. He didn't have, it was on Allah to give him the hymns. Right. Okay. So uh, if you go back, uh, go back like four verses up. So, okay. And then we can connect this in a multidimensional way. You'll see what I mean. Uh, just two ayahs before. Yeah. Balil insan wa ala nafsihi basira. Man has full insight against himself. He knows how much I'm in the water. Okay. But what makes man not have insight to himself? Next eye. Sorry, one second. Balil insanu ala nafsihi basira. But man has full insight to himself. But what? But he throws excuses. Then the next, now you take out that lesson. Bal al ajila. And why do you throw excuses? Because you love the ajila, the here and the now. The here and the now. Immediate. The immediate. Mm. And in a sense, this was happening with the Prophet, but at a spiritual level. Mm. He was doing it for Quran. He was hurrying up to memorize the. So if you look at the. Now, next verse. The same word. Mm. And don't move your tongue in ujla, in, in, in haste. Be right. with the Quran. Don't, don't be speed, don't speed, okay. Quran. Don't speed up. Okay. All right. So there's spiritual haste. Mm. Yes. Where you want immediately your du'as and everything you're saying. Right, done. right. And then there's love for dunya, which becomes your excuses, and then you don't have full insight. Mm. Okay. Yep. So la tuharik bihi lisanaka litajalabi inna alayna. No, we will gather this Quran. Oh, prophet, interesting, interesting, and interesting. we will cause you to recite it. Or the other meaning is 
inna alayna jama'ahu. We will gather this Quran in the form mm. of a book because it wasn't in the form of a book, mm. and we will then have it recited. Okay. And this recitation, right? I think, Sheikh, yeah. Uh, Sheikh, uh, uh, very interesting. You mentioned that uh, we will gather that in a book because, uh, from what I've learned from Sheikh Imran Hussein and how I've uh, understood it, is that Allah was uh, reciting the Quran every month to a Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam through uh, Jibril alaihi wasallam. He was reciting the full Quran, even the verses which are not revealed as wahi to the Prophet sallallahu alaihi wasallam. So this Quran is being recited according to the lunar month to the Prophet, but but uh, a verse is only uh, 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 sent as wahi to the Prophet when there is uh, the need to, such as uh, when the, the rabbis ask the Prophet about the about the the three questions, then one verse came from Surah Isra and two verses came from Surah Kahab. So they did not come as full surahs. They came as verses. This right. this validates Sheikh Imran Hussein's view that Studying. When, when, when a verse is released released as a wahi, it comes like a star. like mm. a, uh, So it comes solitary. But when it's recited, it's recited holistically. Mm. Difference between how you recite and how you study. Yep. How you study, yes. Yep. Yep. So, just lastly, uh, on this about the Quran recitation according to the moon. So, we spoke about uh, how Surah Al Qamar um, it seems to indicate because that verse is repeated four times about the recitation of the Quran in Surah Al Qamar. And so, we spoke about why uh, recite the Quran as it's a protection uh, on so many levels on how strong it is. But then how do we recite according to the moon? And so for me, this uh, hadith, what is the hadith? The Sheikh Imran Hussain mentions, yeah, read, the, read the Quran once every month. Obviously, it's supposed to be recite. If it's, uh, yeah, recite the Quran once every month. So if it's every month, my question is, when you look at Wikipedia and you look at the month, yeah, it's all about the moon. There is no such thing as a solar month. There is no such thing. It, it's a contradiction. Uh, if you say solar month, it's like you saying solar moon. Uh, because the word moon, I think, if I'm right, is from moon. Yeah, they've just got, got rid of that O. Oh, I think it's moon. Yeah. And on top of that, if you look at what a moon is, so Sheikh Imran Hussain says, just like Islam says, where is it? 29 or 30 days, isn't it? 29 or 30 days. Yeah, so that is what a month is. It's not about following according to the moon, just like how people say the nikah. I mean, there's no such thing as polygamy. How uh, what was his name? Uh, Imam Abdul Latif said there is no such thing as polygamy. Nikah is as as uh, Allah says in the Quran, uh, one, two, three, or four. That's the definition of nikah. So there is no such thing as a solar month. A month is according to the moon. Yeah, according to this, that's what it seems like to me. I don't know what you think. Yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. So moon has always been, uh, I mean, the month has always been according to the moon. So that's one more reason why to recite according to the moon. And so then obviously people say, how do you recite according to the moon? Um, yeah, so Surah Al-Fatiha first. Why Surah Al-Fatiha before all of your recitation? Uh, Sheikh Imran Hussain says this as well, which is which is beautiful. So if this Quran is a register well protected, yeah, so that gives you the description that you need a lock. And uh, Sheikh Imran Hussain shows this brilliantly. So if this Quran is well protected, well guarded, so how do you unlock it? You unlock it. Oh yeah, so why, wait, sorry, before we even get to that. So why is it uh, well protected, well guarded? So that falsehood cannot approach it. That's why it's well guarded. This verse shows that it's well guarded to protect the Quran from any falsehood. So therefore, if it's protected from falsehood, um, yeah, how do you unlock it? And this is the verse that Sheikh Ramana said is pointing to how you unlock the Quran when you're reciting it. And I found this interesting. It's not, it's not, it's not uh, explicit, is it? The seven oft-repeated verses of the Quran. 
So this is the verse that Sheikh Imran Hussain points out, why you recite Surah Al-Fatiha before all of your recitation. Because if it's protected from falsehood and you want to open it, then Allah has actually given you the instruction on how to open it. Yeah, is that right, Sheikh? Yeah, that makes sense. And also yeah. uh, Fatiha, the meaning of Fatiha, mm -hmm. the opening. Yes, the open. Oh, yes, thank you. Yes, the opening as well. So it opens that lock. Yeah. And uh, also the seven, because you know when we yes, what you look for, when we look for that basira, it comes from the sky, which is mm -hmm. how many how many skies are there? There's seven stratospheres in the sky, mm -hmm. right? And there's something else that when nur or when light hits a stratosphere, it it creates the seven uh, color spectrum. So this seven, it's not only just you know. In mm -hmm. the Quran, it's in nature that which Allah Subhanahu obviously created, but it's all coming now together. Mm. Uh, and so yeah, I'm sure there's so many reasons about that seven as well, just like even, you said. Yeah, yeah, even like even the even chapter 17 is what Surah Isra, right? right. So obviously, okay, now why 17? Yes. You know, Sheikh, this is this is this is so beautiful. Think about when Allah or when Prophet Sallam, when he went up to the heavens and the earth. To meet Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, He came down with Salah, right? And He came. Did He come down with a Sunnah or did He come down with a Fard? He came down with a Fard. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So if He came down with a Fard, if you count up all the Fard Salah, two in Fajr, four in Dhuhr, four in Asr, three in Maghrib, mm. four in Isha, it's seventeen. Oh wow! Subhanallah, check that out. So it's all encoded perfectly yeah. in the Quran. Say that also, again. So, so Surah Isra. 17. Yeah. So Surah Isra is the 17th and what came down oh, sorry. the Fard. Is, yes, it came down the Fard. The Fard. And, and if you add up all the Fard, it adds up to 17. 17. Yeah, so what is it? 2 plus 4 plus 4, uh, four plus 3 uh, 3 plus four. 4. 17. Yep. That's amazing. That's amazing, Subhanallah. That's amazing, man. That's yeah. mashallah. So, yeah. <laughs> and, um, yeah. Well, yeah, there's, there's, there's tons. I mean, I can go forever, but... I know, I know, I know. Let's just so, stick on so to this have, one. You just have the time, though, at the right time. Yeah, I know. I think it's so. just like... Um, yeah, and so, yeah. So, anyway, just in case you missed it, uh, Brother Sadiq. Um, so, why do we recite Surah Fatiha? Because, obviously, if it's protected, if the Quran is protected from falsehood, and to mm -hmm. unlock it, the, you have to unlock it with Surah Al-Fatiha, which is seven verses, which is the opening. Um, yeah, the key. yeah. Okay, so this is the controversial bit, uh, maybe. Um, so this is what Sheikh Amman is saying. says, then you recite complete surahs within each day and not part of it the way the Quran has disgracefully been chopped into by some unknown culprit, as Sheikh Amman is saying. Says. Not only and Sheikh Amman is saying. Sorry, mm. Doctor Sir Ahmed had oh, the yes, same. Yes, you did say. You did oh, say. really? Did he? I didn't know this. I didn't know that. Yeah, I, I mean, he had different method, but he wouldn't allow for the stopping midway of a surah. Sheikh, can you tell us the meaning of the word surah? Ah, very good question. <laughs> because, surah, uh, yeah, okay. Surah, it's the word surah is actually in its linguistic meaning is used in Surah Hadith. In okay. Surah Hijra. No, no, hadith, 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 okay. hadith. You know, in the day of judgment, there will come a wall. Ah, Whoever yes. enters it, right? Whoever enters this wall. Surah means a wall. wall. I love and the word surah usually means the wall of a fort. So what do you do at a wall? You stop. Right? And yeah. so the whoever enters into the fort is protected. Mm -hmm. okay, you enter into the surah you become protected. Mm -hmm. And uh, so this is one of the meanings, one of the ways the scholars have described the meaning of the word surah. And uh, it, let me just actually, uh, as I'm talking, let me actually look for that verse uh, in Surah Al-Hadid uh, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions this. Um, but the word surah means the wall of a fort. Okay. And so what does it mean? Uh, an ayah is the basic unit of Quran, as you know. An ayah. It's a brick. It's, it's like a brick, but it's not a sentence. Yep. So don't, uh, we should, uh, and, but an ayah means a sign. Hmm. Right? 
And uh, you can say Surah also is indicating like a whole city. Yes. So you know how the Prophet said that, uh, that uh, I am the city of knowledge and Ali is its door. So in this sense, the city of a, a surah is a city of Allah's wisdom. It's like a whole city. And every city oh. in Quran is different from the other city, meaning every surah mm -hmm. is different from the other surah. It's very different. It's, it's like a different, uh, almost like uh, it, they, it's different wavelength, so to say. So uh, each city comes with its, you can say, jannah, right? Yeah. So every place is a different jannah. It's a different city. And uh, let me actually uh, look at this. Uh, I'll be able to do yeah, that. So what, what maybe whilst you find that. Yeah. Hadith, yeah? Surah Hadith. Yes. Hadith. I'm going to show you in a second, inshallah. Yeah, so Sheikh Imran Hussain says that you have to complete the surahs and not chop them. And these are the verses that Sheikh Imran Hussain uh, supports why he's saying that. Because in Surah Al Hijr, verse 89, Allah says, uh, Was it? And say, Indeed, I am the clear warner, warning about what? Allah is warning here. Yeah, Allah, what is Allah warning about? Next verse. Just By the way, uh, yeah. Sheikh said, Sheikh said uh, a fort into a city. Look at the. Mm -hmm. Look at the sort of the city of stone. Oh wow! It's yes, there. good spot. Good spot. City yeah. of stone. City of stone. Yep. So indeed, I am clear now. Clear warning. What is Allah warning about? The Allah. Those who divide. Yeah. Yeah. Wait. The, wait. Hold on. The we sent down on those who divided. Yeah. So Allah is warning those who separated the Quran into portions. So by your Lord, we will question them all. Allah is going to question all of them. For what they did, this is what Sheikh Imran and Sayyid says. Allah is going to question all of them for what they did. And so, what was wrong with what they did? Because they didn't need to do anything. Because this verse tells you, Allah is saying very clearly, who who divided the Quran? Allah divided the Quran. Yes. Yes. And just like it, just like the separators, even in the Ummah, right? Like there's a separation when Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says it has come down to a people who think, mm. not that there's like a pyramid scheme where now you got to. Travel through mm. the pyramid just to get the knowledge, right? No, no. Right. So, uh, uh, I am number thirteen. Sorry to interject. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. Surah Hadid, I number thirteen. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> That's interesting, huh? That is them. That is them. They're, they're the thirteen, the rebellious. Wow, the people of thirteen, man. I'm telling you. So, yo, my munafiquna wal munafiqat. The day that it will be said to the munafiqin, men and women. They will say to us on that day. Oh, be so okay, I won't oh, Just wait. Can we have some of the light that you had? Because what will happen is they will be going with us. But halfway through, they'll lose their light. Wow. Now they'll be like... That's a tease. That's the biggest tease. Yeah, halfway through they'll lose their light. Now, Look, wait for us. We want only a small portion of your nur. We've lost our nur. No, no, no. Now you go back. We can't, you can't take our nur. <laughs> so then go back and seek your light. So a, a wall will now come between them because you will not be able to see. The people who had light, they will move forward. Some, the Prophet said some people will move forward like a torch in front of them. Some people will have light. It'll go from here to Sana, the Prophet said in one hadith. Like it'll be from Medina, like Medina to Sana is another city in Yemen. Okay, Yemen, yeah. A lot of light. They'll go very fast Okay, at the speed of light. Other people have, will crawl. Like they have just a small torch. But yeah. they'll make it across the boundary. See? <laughs> Uh, so so a, a wall will now be put up after a certain amount of time those that don't make it across the wall that's it, they're done uh, then when that wall comes down whoever enters into that wall into that port, he will be in the rahmah of Allah 
in that sense, when you say Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim and you read any surah, in that sense, you can say metaphorically, you come into the rahmah of Allah, to the protection of Allah. Every surah has its rahmah. وَظَاهِرُهُ مِنْ قِبْلِهِ الْعَذَابِ And those that will be outside the door, they will meet the punishment of Allah. Hmm. So, so, so sorry, so she's clearly a wall. Th- and, thinking, uh, thinking about this, when we recite a surah, as you said, each surah is... Remember the wall of Ya'juj and Ma'juj? Yeah. yeah. So hmm. this, you know, it, uh, and, and now if you think of when Shaykh Imran Hussain says that it's referring to Quran and Sunnah, so it is not baseless that he's saying that because the wall is literally the Quran, the surah, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. right? And uh, and so meaning that there's the, there's a there's an, an, an illusion to this, simply in the Quran, this metaphor in the Quran to it. Mm. Yeah. So what is Allah warning about here in this verse? Allah's warning. So what Sheikh Imran is saying is pointing out why can you not chop the Quran into pieces? Because Allah is making it clear that He's warning about those. Who separated those who divided al muqtasimin alladhi ja'ala al quran al azim is another one those who broke quran into pieces right so yeah so, so Sheikh, is... i think this is one of the answers for why a muslims kind of lost their protection because when we're reciting full surah when we're reciting one surah followed by another full surah we are entering into that surah's protection Mm-hmm. The surah, because the surah itself is a protection innately, and, and what the and mu- guidance and guidance as well. Yeah. But the muhtasimin, the people who chopped the Quran and told the people to recite by Jews, not by surah. Mm. So this automatically your your Quran recitation is devoid of mm. any of the complete, yeah, of the completeness, yeah. And so, uh, yeah. So what does Allah say? It's a warning from Allah. Allah <inaudible> this is the one. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Who parted and portioned the Quran? Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. They, meaning they uh, they t- they tore apart its uh, its 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 coherence. Right. Took away its magic. I mean, no, not magic. Mm-hmm. Yes. I mean, miracles. Yeah. Miraculous yeah. nature. Yeah. Miraculous yeah. nature. Yeah. Good magic. Yeah. Good. Yeah. Not um, Disney. Yeah, Disney magic. Exactly. Yeah. And um, so Allah is saying He will question all of them. For what they used to do with this, this, is, a ter- this is a terrifying verse, man. For the yeah, for, for what they used terrifying. to do, and one more. I don't know if Sheikh Imran Hussain mentioned this, or if I found this, I can't remember. But this is making it very clear to me why they don't need to do it. And for those who can see, because Allah's made it clear, wa Quranan faraknahu. So Allah's already divided it. Yes. That you might recite it. Yeah, mm-hmm. that you might recite it to people. At, oh no, Sheikh Imran Hussain mentioned this. I think. Uh, so people are in intervals in stages yeah so we have separated it so that you might recite it in intervals is that right yes in intervals yeah so from one surah to another surah so on and yeah. so forth like you know right she, she, for those uh, uh, like there are people who recite the quran more than once in the month so uh, what protocol or because obviously then they're not going according to the like moon like this surah this day so, like, what what does the, so the prophet said? If you can recite more than one a month, it's okay. Yeah, there you go. Once every month, he said, "I have strength to do, to do more." The prophet said, "Then read it in twenty nights." I have strength to do more. The prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, "Then read it in seven nights, and do not do more than that." And according to one narration, one third of the Quran. Okay. And then the prophet said, "Wathulu kathir," and one third is too much. Mm. He know. says, and he's saying nights. He's not saying day. Mm. Right. Nights because the moon right. after that's Maghrib. Moon. Exactly. That's when you recite. Oh. Yes. So. Yep. So anyway, I just wanted to go through that. Hopefully, it helps. It benefits people um, understanding why we should recite this according to the moon, like Sheikh Imran Hussain says, and uh, to seek the full uh, potential and the benefit from the Quran, especially as it's a recitation. That where is it? It's a weapon against the disbelievers and it's a cure for us for all the illnesses that we have. And I think, yeah, it's only through the recitation. Uh, I feel it now as well. When I believe it, I'm reciting it as loudly, not like crazy loud, but as loudly as I can, knowing the power that it has throughout your body, you know, the vocal recitation, vibration. Uh, hitting your, yeah, exactly, vibration. 
you know, people love that these days, isn't it? Vibration and frequencies, yeah? Vibration. So this, this is the ultimate one. This is the ultimate. This is the true one. And um, yeah, so anyway, so I hope this benefits people. Uh, look, if you look at Surah Al-Kamar, that verse repeated four times, I think is a big indicator about reciting the Quran as well. And that Surah Al-Kamar is the moon. So it, there's just so much evidence to support why we should be reciting this according to the moon. But anyway, that's me done. It's been a long day. And Jazakallah here. Um, Sheikh, if you if you could finish for us with the the dua. Allahumma arhamna bil Quran al Oh Allah, have mercy upon us by the Quran that is so great. Allahumma taj al Quran rabiya qulubina. Make Quran a delight for our hearts. اللهم ارحمنا بالقرآن العظيم وجعله لنا إماما ونورا وهدى and may Allah make this Quran a light for us an imam for us a guidance for us ورزقنا تلاوته and may give us the rizq the, the sustenance ورزقنا تلاوته آناء الليل وأطراف النهار to read Quran in the portions of the night and in the portions of the day May Allah make us of those people who read Quran and absorb Quran and Quran becomes part of our thinking, our thoughts, our cells, our body, every part of our body. Allahumma amin. It nourishes our root, our soul. Allahumma amin. Jazakallah.